Good morning. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. <laughs> Where are we at? There we go. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church. We're glad you're here. If you're here with us in the sanctuary or if you're here with us on live stream, thank you for joining us. Just a few announcements for today. Uh, we do have fellowship following our service today. Uh, so join us for some good conversation and some good treats downstairs. Um, just to give you a heads up of what the craziness uh, is of this past week, uh, last Sunday when uh, I came across the computer in, this, in the secretary's office, it was on blue screen. And uh, that was the beginning of our week of kind of mayhem, um, trying to get that computer to restore to an earlier system, and then we find out that the motherboard's bad, and now we're trying to pull the data off. Um, my, my car had a, a major calamity on Monday morning, and Gerald was helping me uh, solve that issue most of Monday. Um, our, our network went down uh, three or four times this week while I was trying to get things accomplished. Um, what else? Uh, this Monday, when we're actually going to be installing new software is when the electric company is planning an outage. So that's good. Um, this morning, the uh, clicker on the computer decides it doesn't want to move anything forward for us, so we're without a clicker right now. Poor Gerald's going to lose more hair than he already has. Um, I tried to print my sermon this morning, and that wouldn't work. Um, so. I'm going to be going and grabbing my laptop and pulling up my sermon at the time that it needs to be done. Hopefully that will work. <laughs> so bear with us as we kind of go through a very hectic, ain't gonna happen kind of week, kind of week, and uh, see how this all rolls. So are there any other announcements I'm sure I'm forgetting? Hearing none. Oh, wait. Uh, the little right arrow on the keyboard. You're gonna, well, the, the thing is on the keyboard, not the mouse. Don't bother with the mouse. Yeah, on the keyboard, it's a little right arrow. Click that and it should move us forward. Maybe the keyboard is malfunctioning now too. <laughs> Let me, well, I'll come back. <laughs> we are being tormented right now. Here we go. That, that should... Oh, hold on. No. There we go. Okay. This is the day the Lord has made. Please rise, if you are able. George, you can, you can remain seated. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who writes the law on our hearts, who draws all people together through Christ Jesus. Amen. Held in God's mercy, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Holy God, we confess that we are caught in snares of sin and cannot break free. We hoard resources while our neighbors are hungry and cold. We speak in ways that silence others. We are silent when we should speak up. We keep score in our hearts. We let hurts grow into hatred. And for all these things and for sins only you know, Forgive us, Lord. Amen. Here is a flood of grace. Out of love for the whole world, God draws near to us, breaks every snare of sin, washes away our wrongs, and restores the promise of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Please join us as we sing our entrance hymn. It is found in the red hymnal, hymn 343. My song is Love Unknown.
trail flash and die. He came from his last throne, salvation to bestow. The world, the love is not the same. You're no, but oh, my friend, my friend. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
God's people on earth. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Let us pray. O God, with steadfast love you draw us to yourself, and in mercy you receive our prayers. Strengthen us to bring forth the fruits of the Spirit, that through life and death we may live in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We hear God's word. First reading is from Jeremiah 31, verses 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our second reading is from Hebrews 5, 5 through 10. We have Psalms to do first. Psalms. <laughs> Excuse me. Come, let us sing to the Lord, let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. In your great compassion, blot out my offenses. Wash me through and through from my wickedness and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my offenses and my sin is ever before me. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are justified when you speak and write in your judgment. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Indeed, I was born steeped in wickedness, a sinner from my mother's womb. Indeed, you delight in truth deep within me. And would have me know wisdom deep within. Remove my sins with hyssop, and I shall be clean. 
Wash me and I shall be purer than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness that the body you have broken may rejoice. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Hide your face from my sins and blot out all my wickedness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain me with your bountiful spirit. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. second reading is Hebrews 5, 5 through 10. Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he says also in another place, you are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him through death. And he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been designated by God a high priest, according to the order of Melchizedek. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Holy Gospel according to John, the 20th, 12th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said <coughs> an angel had spoken to him. Jesus answered this Voice has come for your sake, not for mine. 
Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer, as we now ask that you open our hearts and minds to your word, that we may, we may hear and learn, as in his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Those who love life will lose it. That's a tough statement to say. Now, the book of John, which we are reading today, we're just entering the second portion of his book. The first half is dedicated to and is commonly referred to as the book of signs. This Sunday, we begin the portion of John that is called the book of glory. He reveals the salvation through this glory that is to come for all who believe. So Jesus and the Greeks, this term Greeks is being used in this passage today and I had a question, why was Greeks specifically mentioned? Why didn't he just say Gentiles? Because they would fall into that category as well. Nowhere else in John does Jesus minister to the Greeks specifically. He would not focus on them in his ministry up to this point. Basically, his ministry was focused on the Jewish people, the people that followed God, and he was trying to deliver them the good news. Now, when the Greeks show up, at least this is what I've heard, well, that's kind of an indication that his ministry has broken loose. It was growing. It was not just a ministry to the Jews any longer. It now was being sent to all people. As he said, the hour has come. Jesus would begin, or begin to minister to all. Now, as you might recall, right before this, as we look back a little bit in John, Jesus had entered the city being praised as a king. And just prior to that, he had raised Lazarus from the dead. This miracle led the Jews to want both Jesus and Lazarus to be killed. Seems like a busy week for Jesus as well, as we have been going through one this week. Well, Jesus was being chased down by the Greeks. They used that term specifically. And if the Greeks were asking about Jesus, everybody was asking about Jesus. Now, I had another question that came up in my head, and it was when Philip was asked by the Greeks to, to speak with Jesus, to see Jesus, he didn't go directly to Jesus, he went to Fe Andrew first. Why didn't Philip take them directly to Jesus? Is this passage telling us that we should somehow screen believers before we share Jesus? Should we be hesitant about sharing Jesus? Should we ask the person if they're ready to meet Jesus? Some people might take that the wrong way, of course, but others may actually take it the way it's meant to be heard. The real question is, is that what we're here to do? Is, are we supposed to be asking that question? Maybe, maybe he was telling us that before we start talking about Jesus, we need to join with them in community. We should connect with them in some way prior to bringing up Jesus. And I see us doing that at times. We have programs that get people in the door. We don't want to talk about Jesus right away. That might scare them off. But is this what we're being told to do today? I don't think so. So I ask again, are we gatekeepers for the faith? 
Do we fail to ask people to join us in our journey because we don't think they're ready? We don't think they're the right kind of people to follow Jesus? Well, I hope not, because that's just the right kind of person to follow Jesus. We have to remind ourselves, I'm guessing, is that we are all unprepared for the love of Jesus. We have to remind ourselves that we are also weak and unworthy. We are troubled and sinful. It's our human nature to be like this. And in that human nature, Jesus was also troubled as we go on in this passage. He was experiencing a human trait that we all encounter in our lives. And the book of John doesn't have the Garden of Gethsemane. He speaks it here, that doubt that Jesus might have. But John also delivers it in slightly different of a, a way that you really can't get the idea that Jesus was questioning what he was supposed to be doing. He wasn't contemplating if he should go through with it, like we have read in other Gospels in the garden. Verse 27 says, Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No. It is for this reason that I've come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Seems pretty bold, doesn't it? He knew it was his time. The hour was at hand. So I guess I ask the next question. Do we trust Jesus and God to lead us? In our first lesson in Jeremiah, the prophets were telling us of the coming of Jesus. They were telling us of a time when baptism would be the first step in following God. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them. I will write it on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This passage from Jeremiah is speaking of our baptism, and of Jesus. The point in which we die to sin and are raised again in the Spirit and we are granted the hope of salvation through Jesus. This, is, this idea of death in sin and being reborn again is covered in this passage also by the grain of wheat the one that must die before it will produce much fruit. It's our baptismal promise. It's how Jesus saves us from ourselves. <clears throat> when we are baptized, we die to sin and are given new life in the Spirit. The law is written on our hearts. God in us. <clears throat> And now in this time of the Lenten season, when we die, we are reminded of our frailty. We are reminded of the promised hope of the bodily resurrection. We are raised in new life with Christ. Do we trust Jesus to lead us? Do we trust God to lead us? When we hear God, do we try to explain it away, as did those who witnessed the voice speaking down from heaven? As it says, then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said an angel spoke to him. How often do we experience God in our lives and fail to recognize it as being our God? God fully present with us. 
creating newness of life and structuring our lives to better serve him. Now, God being present with us may not always manifest itself in all good times or all happy times. Not only good things can happen when God is with us, but it also manifests itself when things don't look so good. Things don't fall into place, <laughs> like today and this past week. Blessings flowing reveal themselves, and we find his presence with us. Now having that feeling, that uncertainty, is the ideal moment when we turn to praise God. We need to have that feeling in the presence of Jesus in our lives, that certainty, that hope, that everything will be all right. Well, how often do we not just fail to recognize that Jesus or God is with us, but may instead deny the possibility that it's him at all, that it's somehow us in control? God being present in our lives, and we instead take credit for the successes that we have. We take credit for the spirit moving in and among us. Sometimes I wonder if we're capable of acknowledging that our lives are blessed by God in our victories and in our failures. Are we capable of identifying that the spirit moves in our lives on a daily basis? The presence is powerful. We should be able to recognize it. But we sometimes pass it off. I wonder how he reacts to that. <laughs> his timing is perfect, and his timing is now. As it says in this passage, the time has come. I ask you to seek out Jesus in, in your life today. Find his presence as we go about our days, as we see good things, and as we see bad. Celebrate this powerful presence when it shows itself. And even when we don't want to acknowledge it, celebrate that powerful presence because it's there. The grace granted to us shows itself every day in the good times and the bad. This passage is telling us to give up our lives to Jesus, steer clear of the temptations of this world, because that only leads to death without the bodily resurrection. Being humble instead of arrogantly taking responsibility for the good things in our lives. Or in the same way, let us seek out methods that we can be the presence of God in other people's lives every day. Maybe at that moment when we see someone in need is our time that he's called us to do. Now in Lent, the covenant of baptism is upon us. He grants us the presence of the Spirit in our lives, given to us freely, granted to us by his grace. In our baptism, we are given the presence of the Spirit. We may try to avoid it. We may try to deny it, but it is always there, working in us to move us toward Jesus, day in and day, day out. Let's make a point not to spend our days loving the world, but instead serving God. Those Greeks and all those Gentiles, well, now is the time that they will hear about Jesus, but they will hear about Jesus through us. It is our time. The message of hope that Jesus spreads is our message that we must spread. Hope in a new life in Christ. From our baptismal death until our bodily resurrection in new life in Christ. This is the true hope of Lent. Let us celebrate this in his service. Amen.
We continue our service with singing the hymn of the day, Now the Green Blade Rises. It's found in the red hymnal in hymn 379. <laughs> Living together in trust and hope, let us confess our faith using the Apostle Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. God of the covenant, through the church you draw us into community. We give thanks for the means of grace around which we gather. Inspire writers, musicians, and artists whose creative gifts adorn our worship. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of all that exists, you lavish the earth with extravagant beauty. Preserve the rich and complex diversity of living things. Support, support local, national, and international efforts to protect the environment for future generations. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. God of the nations, you desire peace and plenty for all people. Defend those who challenge oppression and expose corruption. Support advocates of human rights and the welfare of children. Hear us, O oh God. God of goodwill, 
you restore what is broken. We pray for any experience, experiencing estrangement, conflict, abuse in families, or in intimate relationships. Protect and comfort all who are vulnerable, especially those living in institutions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every time and place, you are with us. Support ministries of prayer and presence in this congregation. Move us to reach out to any who are homeless, homebound, lonely, grieving, in treatment, or ill. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of promise, we give thanks for the saints whose faith inspires us, especially Patrick, missionary to Ireland, whom we commemorate today. Grant us faith to trust in your everlasting love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Accompany us on your, our journey, O God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's take a moment and share that peace with one another. Let us pray. Jesus, you are the bread of life and host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered, that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with this holy food, but with the hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. <laughs>
for freedom's birth. Come now and fill our spirit, pour out your gifts abundant. O living breath of God, Holy Spirit, breathe in us as we Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we give our thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O Lord, and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now for the blessing. Beloved, we are God's own people, holy, washed, renewed. God bless you now and keep you, shower you with mercy, fill you with courage, and give you peace. Amen. Please join us in singing our sending hymn. It's found in the red hymnal. Hymn 545, four, Lord, dismiss us with your blessing. Now go in peace, share your bread. Thanks be to God.